Damn. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Nate. This is Lane from the YouTube channel Lane's World. It's a really excellent channel, please go check it out. I followed Lane for quite some time. I really love his adventures and he uh, messaged me a few months ago and said he was gonna be in New Mexico. I finally got to him after telling him to come out to New Mexico, he finally came out. And it is early April right now. And one thing that's challenging in New Mexico in spring is finding a place to do springtime, wintertime backpacking. New Mexico, I think a lot of people think of it as a desert, which it is, most of it, but it is a high desert, which means it is typically cold. As you can maybe tell by the snow flurries around me, today is no exception. It is supposed to be windy and cold today. Still windy tomorrow, but not quite as cold. And then on day three, I think much less windy and still kind of a little bit nicer in the upper 50s. We are in Bandelier National Monument right now, which is near, it's pretty close to Santa Fe, Los Alamos area. Most people who go to Bandelier just go, you know, a mile away from the visitor center and that's it. Today we are going deep into the back country. We are doing a big loop. We're gonna, we're in Frijoles Canyon right now in the Frijoles Narrows. We're gonna go down there. We're gonna go up across Al Upper Alamo Canyon, go down into Capilene Canyon, check out Painted Cave. We're gonna go down and around, back up, hiking along Alamo Trail before crossing at the lower crossing. And we're gonna head back to Frijoles Canyon. I think it's gonna be a great three days. Uh, already having some technical difficulties. Um, I realized I forgot my charging cable for my phone, which is also my camera. So uh, this might be a short video, but I think we're gonna have a good time. Let's get going. So far, so good. I think we're getting pretty close to the Upper Frijoles Crossing, maybe like a mile away. Uh, one of the challenges that I've never experienced hiking in Bandelier before, but I guess it's a good thing, is the creek, well, Frijoles Creek anyway, is pretty high. Um, I think it's just like the spring runoff and all the moisture we've gotten in the last couple weeks. And so, uh, you know, there's some rocks that people clearly put up for crossing, but they're all underwater. And uh, Lane is pretty good at finding a good dry way across, but uh, as you know, I'm still recovering from my broken ankle, which happened about nine and a half months ago. And so my uh, ability to leap from rock to rock is not really quite there yet. So I've actually, I have actually got wet feet, which uh, is something I'm prepared for, but uh, I did not expect for that to be happening on this trip. All right, we are at the Upper Frijoles Crossing. We stopped, had a quick lunch. I stretched the ankle out, took a couple of ibuprofen. We made it here, which is about 6.1 miles. We made it here in about like two and a half, two hours, 45 minutes, something like that. Uh, so not, you know, less than more, than, better than two mile an hour pace, which is pretty good for somebody like me with a bum ankle. I'm sure if I weren't here, Lane would have been here an hour ago. Uh, so we're gonna, right now we're heading up uh, Frijoles Canyon to cross over to Alamo Canyon. I think this is maybe one of the more boring parts of the trip, but the climb out of Frijoles Canyon is kind of compelling. It's a pretty cool view. It's really once you're on that mesa top, it's a little boring, but I think one of my favorite parts about Bandelier in general is just doing both Alamo Canyon crossing. So I'm excited to do that today. And then we're gonna camp somewhere in, I think it's camping zone B, something like that. So yeah, we're gonna head up. Uh, we've probably got about five more miles for the day.
Okay, you see the snow is hitting us again. We are um, in the bottom of Alamo Canyon. I think we're about to start hiking out of it. We've got about probably two miles to go until we get to our planned camp. Um, I'm filling up water because this is the last water source we expect to see until Capilene Canyon tomorrow. Um, probably gonna fill up about like three liters because I still got about half a liter of drinking water and we should hit Capilene Canyon pretty soon tomorrow. So uh, Alamo Canyon or Alamo Creek, whatever it's called, Rio, Rito, Alamo, um, shows up as an intermittent creek on the map, but I have never seen it not flowing. Obviously talk to rangers before you make plans based on that information, but yeah, uh, and it is flowing pretty good this time. We thought we found camp, but soil is pretty rocky. It's like basically total rock, just like an inch beneath our dirt. So we're gonna set up kind of in this direction. We already got a spot picked out. Uh, as you've seen in the video, I mean, it's just been snowing. So the, the forecast has definitely gotten worse. We, had, we have the worst end of the forecast versus what I was seeing. I think initially the forecast was showing like 20% chance in the morning, kind of dying away around like noon to like 10%. But when I just checked the weather now, we're looking at basically a 50% chance of snow until about six o'clock when it kind of, when it dies away to zero. So, ah, we drew the short straw, but certainly nothing unmanageable. Ankles starting to feel heavy. So it's good to stop and get a break. Uh, we get, we get a little bit of a view from camp. We can kind of see over there. That's uh, boundary peak, barely sticking out on the left. I'm not even sure if you can see it very well. And kind of that big mountain is uh, the Dome Wilderness High Point, where of course I was back in late December. So we're gonna get all cozy, put on some warm clothes. I think I'm gonna get some tea going and then uh, uh, we'll chill out. La Casa por la Noche, or as Lane would say, home for the night. All right guys, cheers. Uh, it's not too late, it's only like 6.15 maybe right now, but uh, you know, it's kind of chilly. I'm pretty beat from the day. I'm definitely ready to just sit in my tent and stare at the stare at the roof of my tent for a while before it gets dark and I go to sleep, just so I can kind of be warm. It's about 7.30 a.m. Pack's all ready to go. I uh, briskly got up at 5.05, which is, uh, my phone was off, but that's when my alarm for getting up for work normally goes off. So I'm kind of trained, my circadian rhythm's trained. Lane's back there, getting ready. Um, it is day two, of course. Last night, pretty nice. It, uh, it snowed around sundown, but the wind really backed off and then it was clear skies after that last little snow flurry. Uh, I got down to, I think, 24 was what Lane told me. And uh, I felt pretty warm for 24, but I certainly was still not, you know, roasty toasty. It was, you know, it was curling up a little bit to really maximize warmth. Um, got some breakfast in me, a couple fruit bars, a uh, combination of homemade hot cocoa mix and Trader Joe's instant coffee. So yeah, feeling pretty good. We're gonna head down Upper Alamo Trail towards Capilene Canyon. Uh, my ankle yesterday was doing pretty well, but definitely towards the end of yesterday, it started to hurt. Um, you know, it's pain. You can fight through it. Uh, still haven't left camp yet, waiting for Lane to get ready, but decided to walk over to uh, the rim of Capilene Canyon. As you can tell, it's just beautiful. 
We're gonna be dropping in here pretty soon. Uh, further down trail though. Uh, this is the San Miguel's behind me. There's a Boundary Peak. There's a Dome Wilderness High Point. Of course, I was right here uh, about four months ago, three months ago. And it's funny to think last time I was here how snowy it was and how there's no snow, even though it is uh, still rather cold. Well, there's a little bit of snow, obviously, but just uh, really love northern New Mexico. Love this area. It's fun to, now that I've been doing all these peaks, it's fun to like come somewhere like here and look and be like, oh yeah, I've been there. I've been there. I've been, oh, where's the Sandias? The Sandias are behind me somewhere. Is that them right there? Kind of hard to tell in this uh, selfie cam, but can also see, I don't know if you can see it right now, but I think this is Cochiti Lake right here. So cool views from right here. I'm excited to get down into Capilene Canyon. Check out Painted Cave. It is. It feels nice. I thought all the downhill hiking would keep me somewhat cool, but now I'm warming up. Yeah. But that's a good problem to have. Hell yeah. Happy yesterday. Stone lions, of course, as the name implies, they are two crouching mountain lions, of course, over the years. I've seen them in pictures from like 30, 40 years ago. I think the erosion, just natural erosion is kind of worn at them. But you, from this angle, you can definitely see like the tail on the one closer to me, kind of see like the head. You can see probably the outline of like the uh, crouching legs. Um, I don't know anything about this shrine. It's, of course, an active Cochiti Pueblo shrine. So, of course, we're only taking pictures and appreciating it for what it is and just enjoying the beautiful day. Okay, we are in Capilene Canyon. We dropped our packs, we're heading towards Painted Cave. We're gonna do the lollipop option after all. So we're gonna hike the two, two and a half miles or so to Painted Cave, check it out, and then hike back, get some water, and head back up to uh, Yapashi Pueblo and probably camp overnight at the Alamo Rim. Uh, unfortunately, got some service. Found out that uh, despite having two NC State alums uh, together at once, uh, the Wolf Pack lost both final four games, but I think another reason why is because Lane just told me that he's really a Tar Heel at heart. That's right. So uh, blame him. Go Heels. All you Wolfpack fans. Go Pack. Okay, so you can see Painted Cave behind me. Um, obviously, you can't climb up there. It's not allowed. I could do it, but I'm not going to. Um, I have heard that the cave is, uh, 
I don't know how frequently, but that it's sometimes uh, repainted by, I think, Coche de Pueblo. So that probably accounts for its uh, vibrance. But I do believe that the original artwork or the original uh, tracings of the artwork is back to like probably, I think, the 15 or 1600s. I don't know. So I don't really know about that for sure. I'll correct that below if I'm wrong. So um, I had a quick snack, drink some water, sat down for a bit. Now we're going to do the, do the hike back to the backpacks where we'll get water and head back up Capilene Canyon. One last look at Boundary Peak as we kind of head out of this low area of the canyon and head north. As you can see, the trail is pretty undefined here. There are some flags and stuff for it to kind of help with route finding, but certainly there is not a tr proper trail in this area. We're back at uh, the crossing of Capilene Canyon, where we came down in, um, filled up some water, kind of filtered and chugged about a liter and a half, maybe close to two liters, and filled up. So I think I'm, I think I'm running with maybe a, almost, uh, well, probably a little over three liters in total. I think Lane's got a similar amount. So this is the last water source we have for the trip. We're gonna climb back up Capilene Canyon, back towards Stone Lions. And uh, then we're going to cut off east towards the Apache Pueblo, which is a pretty cool uh, abandoned um, old ancestral Pueblo in sight. And then I think our goal for the day is to then make it maybe another mile further east, uh, maybe more like two miles to the crossing of uh, Lower Alamo Canyon, where we will camp on the rim. And then tomorrow we should have about five, five and a half miles, and then we're out of here. Right, we've reached camp for the night. We are on the southern rim of Alamo Canyon. Um, I definitely remember last time I did this hike in uh, 2018 or so. Alamo Can the specifically the lower crossing of Alamo Canyon was one of my favorite parts of the trip. Uh, I am going to show you the view from our camp in just a second. And this is the slightly vertigo inducing view into Alamo Canyon. Good thing I'm doing this now before the sun blocks off any of the other views, but you can see all the hoodoos, the tent rocks and whatnot down there. Um, definitely as impressive as I remember. So tomorrow our plan is we're going down in there and coming right back out and then we're headed back to the visitor center. Should be about four miles. All right, guys, as you can see, I am in the tent. It's still day out, but uh, it was starting to get a little chilly. So I zipped up, got all nice and cozy. Probably just gonna read the map or stare at the ceiling until it's bedtime. Uh, today was a great day. Weather was amazing. Uh, I don't know if I've got some sun, but I tried to keep uh, tried to keep my gator on most of the day. I didn't get much sun, but might not have been perfect. Um, but yeah, I mean, after yesterday with just the terrible weather, today was such a welcome relief. We were, I think, we were both kind of bummed out that the weather didn't cooperate yesterday. But today we saw cultural sites, the amazing canyons. Uh, Capitoline Canyon. It's pretty burnt out, but I think it's very beautiful with that backdrop of the San Miguel's. And then, of course, seeing the rim of Alamo Canyon today and tomorrow we'll be dropping into it. Super excited for that. We've got about four miles to go until the visitor center tomorrow. I think we're going to get try to get a somewhat early start just so we can get back home and shower up that much quicker. Again, 
Sorry if I didn't film all that much. I, of course, I felt like I filmed enough, but you know, you don't know until you get home and start editing. But I am still rationing battery. I think last time I checked, before I started filming this, I was at about 41%. So I've, probably by the end of the day, I'll have about like 33% to work with tomorrow, which should be enough to film, uh, given that it's such a short day. Uh, thanks again for watching, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. morning we are dipping down into Alamo Canyon it was a uh, it was a pretty warm night last night at least in our tents and well for one of us anyway <laughs> I think Lane was pretty comfortable but he did another night of cowboy camping and but I was pretty warm I actually had to shed layers which was nice versus the night before but this morning despite the sun coming up it is not really warming up super quickly and our breeze has also picked up so we're a little chilly Heading down in Alamo Canyon, I'm sure that chilliness will change when we come up the other side, but uh, yeah, I've got, for those who are keeping track of battery rationing, I'm at 21% right now, so uh, we got, hopefully, hopefully I have enough battery to catch you the rest of the trip. Last mile-ish of the day, home stretch, down into Frijoles Canyon, back to the visitor center to return our permits. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining me, Lane. I, I hope I'm not speaking too out of place by saying that we had a great time. Great time. Uh, weather didn't want to cooperate at first, but the last few days were pretty nice. Um, definitely check out Bandolier, check out Lane's channel. If you like backpacking this uh, great nation, he does it everywhere. Uh, definitely a channel worth checking out. Thanks for bearing with these awful technical difficulties. I'm sure this was a short video, but uh, I, think, uh, I think we represented Bandolier well. Lane's video, when that comes out, definitely go watch it. Thanks again for joining me. See you guys later.